When saving a life means getting involved in a situation that could be deadly, few people are willing to take the risk, as Edwin Ortiz discovered on the night of September 7, 1987. Columbia University, where they have a dance every first Friday of the month. We headed down to Broadway to the 50th Street Station to take the subway up to Columbia University. One floor below, a crowd of people were waiting for the uptown local due any minute. This woman came out of nowhere and started yelling, there's someone in the track. I just reacted to the situation. I just ran straight down. I didn't think about the possibility of a subway coming into the station. Edwin jumped onto the tracks along with another bystander and Melvin Shad. There was nothing he could do because he was knocked out. I mean, I couldn't just stand there and watch a train run over train was due to arrive at the station in less than a minute. From the platform above, Edwin's friend Dennis Diaz tried to help. Edwin and the two guys that were down there started to push him up. He was very heavy, this man. I think everyone that was up there had such a fear of going into the subway tracks because you read about people being thrown in front of a train and, you know, you don't want to be a, become a statistic. I looked up, you could see the lights coming you know, on the rail, and uh, we kept struggling. I looked up again, and there it was. I really had no idea what was happening. You know, your best friend that you've, you know, gone through everything with um, jumps into a track, and you don't know what's going on. Transit cop Sean McGowan radioed his dispatcher, who sent a transit rescue unit to the station, including EMT Frank Berlang. Third one, when we receive a call of someone on the tracks, uh, right away we think the worst scenario. Having a 4,000-ton train striker hit you in any shape, way, or form is going to do major damage. I was able to lay back down and just sort of yell down into the tracks. Hey, you guys okay? Yeah, man. And at that point, I heard him. The first thing that came to my mind was, move this damn train out of the way. Get me out of here. I had soil and blood on my arm, and I was like, where is this coming from? I thought I had hurt myself somehow without realizing it. But then I looked at him, and he really cracked open his head. Just as the subway was coming into the station. We noticed that there was this crawl space underneath the platform. We just went whack right underneath the platform and crawled in. Within five minutes, the rescue unit arrived. When we got there, they were in a peculiar situation where there was a third rail. And that one is fired up with 600 volts of electricity, or 600 volts that would kill you instantly. We need help. The undercarriage of a train is also electrified with the 600 volts. Calm down. All right. Just try to breathe. All, right. All I kept thinking was, this city is so screwed up that they can't take the subway train and move it 25 feet down to let us out. Dennis yells down to me that they didn't want to move the subway train because they didn't know if any parts of our bodies or parts of our clothes were on the track and if they moved it, it would grab onto one of us and drag us down. This guy's in bad shape. At one point, 
he regains his consciousness and starts to grab for the underside of the train. At which point Jeff and I panic because we're holding on to him, we'll get electrocuted and die. I saw where they were located. I screamed to my partner, get this power off immediately. They're near the contact shoe of the train. When rescuers saw that the victim was in danger of being electrocuted before they could get the voltage turned off, they decided they couldn't wait. If we get power off immediately, Kay, we got a uh, lot of people under the train. Upon seeing me, I think it relaxed them a little, but also built up their anxiety to get out of there quick. I'll replace the bag over the shoe to protect you. All right. With the body bag up against the power shoe, there was non-conductive material between me and the shoe. So I don't think I would have gotten electrified if I did touch it. At that point, all I wanted was to get out of there because I started thinking about what was down there. In New York, we have rats the size of chihuahuas. <laughs> Please, a little more. Reach up for the plaque. Try to stand up. He sustained a couple of lacerations, one to the head and arm. As we bandaged his wound, we put a cervical collar on his neck because of the fall he had taken. The 23-year-old victim was taken to the hospital for examination and released without serious injury. The three of us wouldn't have been there, what would have happened? Because out of all the people there, only three people attempted to do something. Because if, if I was me down there on the tracks, I would want people to get involved and save me. So what goes around comes around, you know. I just sat down and I just started to shake. I was like, what the hell did I do? And I was, I was like, you're crazy. Why did you do this? But, you know, a lot of people think that New Yorkers are cold and heartless and wouldn't, you know, help their neighbors. And... It's true to a certain extent. There are a lot of people like that in New York, but I think there are also a lot of people who would help somebody who needed help. Victim Alex Kumba had suffered an epileptic seizure that caused him to fall onto the tracks. Three years later, Alex and his father looked back on the night he nearly lost his life. I didn't believe it happened to me, and the second shock was that somebody actually risked their own life to save me. Those two people that did that was just incredible. And I was amazed because to find people that will look after you in this city is very hard. And I'm very thankful to them. And I wish that one day I could do something for them. And I guess my son was lucky that he had two angels next to him. <laughs>